This time on 4x4 Garage, we're back at Ian's shop. We're continuing on the Jeep and we're gonna be starting another Cummins build. Last time, we took the Cummins TJ, removed the drivetrain, and then brought in our new frame and did a whole lot of cutting and grinding. A little bit of welding, but now we're ready to continue on getting the drivetrain reassembled and back in the new chassis. We got the original MP231 T case out of the Wrangler. These are great units, really durable, strong, lightweight, easy to work on. What I'm gonna do is crack the back half of this thing open, get rid of this long slip yoke output shaft and put a fixed yoke shaft on it. It's gonna be shorter, it's gonna allow us to have a longer rear drive shaft. This is the advanced adapter short shaft fixed yoke kit. And basically what it does is it replaces the factory slip yoke output shaft with this heavy duty 32 spline short shaft kit that accepts a flange or a CV yoke. So we're using a 1310 CV yoke on the back of this one. You see how much shorter it is? So what this does is it increases your rear drive shaft length, improves your rear drive shaft angle. So if you have a short wheelbase Jeep with a lift, you're not gonna have as bad vibrations or anything like that. And it's a, it's a really easy kit to put together. It includes the new heavy duty aluminum tail housing. Here, we're gonna get this all back together, transfer the, the gears onto the new advanced shaft, put it all back together, silicone it up, and we'll be good to go. So this is a early prototype adapter setup we had on this Jeep. Uh, rotating mass, we were around 90 pounds uh, between two flywheels. So the Jeep four liter flywheel, a hat style adapter, and then the Cummins flywheel. Plus we have an aluminum uh, adapter plate here for the Jeep four liter bell housing. So now program's been in place for a few years. And we've got Chad from Quick Draw here who has the latest and greatest, uh, much more simplified, shorter and, and lighter version of this AX15 NV3500 adapter. So half the weight, half the rotating mass between the prototype setup and what you have now with Quick Draw. Yeah, and that's pretty impressive on its own, but really our chase was trying to get length out of the equation so that you could fit this in the smaller builds, you know, the TJs and YJs that don't have the additional frame length. Uh, you just don't want crazy drive shaft angles, so this, this cuts a lot of the length out as well as the weight prolonging the engine life. In the early days of the Cummins R2.8 program, there wasn't a lot of aftermarket support to mate the engine to a variety of transmissions. However, Quick Draw came on the scene, and that's why Chad is here. Chad is the owner and president of Quick Draw, and he designs adapters to mate this engine to almost any kind of transmission you would want to put in it in an off-road vehicle. A lot of companies look at this process and say, how can I make this most profitable with the least amount of effort? And we wanted to go the extra mile and make products that actually fit correctly like OE would do. So, you know, with our bell housing, we've obviously cut a lot of weight out of it, but we've also cut length. And the length was important for a lot of these smaller builds. Another way we're upgrading our drivetrain is with a spec clutch. This clutch will work great with our R2.8 and put all the power it makes to our transmission when we need it. We're gonna go ahead and mount the AX15 and MP231 to our Cummins R2.8. Then, once the chassis is ready, we can test fit the drivetrain in the Jeep. Next step in this build is gonna to be to once again cut the frame in half. So originally my plan was to just leave the front half of this TJ frame alone and just modify the original coil spring towers. But since we're gonna be running coilovers on all four corners, which means we gotta cut all that stuff off, the amount of hours it takes to remove those, it's actually faster just to completely replace the front of the frame. Something I had asked Ian about this build early on 
is this is going to be on the street a lot. Uh, we want a lot of people to be able to drive it safely. So it was very important for me to keep it low, 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 not a big jacked up Jeep. And Ian doesn't do anything with small tires. So as much as I wanted to do like cool 33s and 35s and make some weird Jeep, he's like, no, 37s, but I'll keep it low, I promise. So because of that, we're going to cut the front end off of this frame, which will leave about mm, four feet of the TJ frame we bought for this project left. and. Maybe next time uh, we're working on it, we'll replace that too, I don't know. Motobilt makes an amazing front frame clip that'll basically slide onto our stock TJ frame, gives us a little bit more room in the engine bay for our engine, and then we start with a nice, fresh, clean set of frame rails to mount things like our coilover shocks. It also gives us a nice stubby front bumper that we can drop a nice rugged ridge winch into, which is perfect. What I have to do is make sure that the frame itself, uh, this section is level to the frame back here, just like we did with the rear frame. I squared it up, measuring off of these body mounts, and then all I'm gonna do right now is just tack it into place. Then we're gonna roll this entire table underneath the Jeep body, and then we'll drop it all in, test fit it. If everything looks like it's gonna fit, then we'll pull it back out finish welding. The whole idea behind stretching this TJ is really twofold. So number one, uh, the engine that's underneath the hood is only emissions compliant up to a certain year range of TJ. So Cummins couldn't put this engine in an LJ. Uh, unfortunately, there was no overlap between our engine and the LJ run of production. So really going to an old TJ and being able to stretch it to get all the benefits of a longer wheelbase LJ uh, is the only way to, to have a Cummins in a long wheelbase uh, TJ platform. Basically taking that early TJ, turning it into an LJ, they get the best of both worlds. They still have the power plant in the vehicle that it's emission compliant for, but at the end of the day, they still have a really cool long wheelbase Jeep, which is better on and off-road. It's time to cut the body to fit the Genrite TJ to LJ frame kit. We've got our measurement here off the step. It's about five inches back. We scribed the line level up the wheel tub. We're gonna cut this thing dead in half and sever the back end of this thing off. And then we're gonna cut these rear tubs out because the Genrite tubs are taller to allow more clearance for bigger tires at a lower lift height. Another indication how the aftermarket has really stepped up to support the Cummins R2.8 engine swaps and Wranglers. This quick draw intercooler and radiator bracket, it drops right in. It comes with the intercooler and allows you to retain your factory radiator. We've got this replacement Duralast radiator since our original one has some miles on it. That way we know we're not gonna have any kind of cooling issues going down the road. Even has this reservoir bracket that mounts to the fender to keep the reservoir up at the highest point so you don't get any air bubbles trapped in the system.
Honestly, the hardest part about dealing with these TJ to LJ conversions always revolves around the bodywork, but the Genrite kit actually has that completely figured out. It starts with a set of their aluminum corners that takes care of all the bodywork on the outside of the truck. It's already pre-cut for the opening for your tire and wheel, which is perfect, and it stretches your wheelbase for the perfect setup for their rear frame stretch kit. Now, inside is where a lot of people kind of lose their mind because you're dealing with a lot of interior sheet metal, but Genrite makes a complete new rear cargo bed package that basically just drops in, finishes out the inside of the back of the Jeep, kind of gives it that race car look, but still gives you a fully sealed interior when you put the top back on your Jeep. The Eden E-Locker is an electronic selectable differential designed for drivers that need traction on demand. Eaton differentials, I've used throughout my whole career. I've never had a problem with them. They always offer exceptional traction, great performance, and they're incredibly strong. We'll have exceptional tractor-like traction whenever we want it with the push of a button, but we can turn them off and have perfect on-road drivability and manners. We're starting with the Rubicon Dana 44 front, so we don't have to re-gear it or add a locker. However, in addition to the Duralast radiator or Duralast gold battery, we are going to equip it with some Duralast gold brake components. Duralast gold is OE spec or better, and you can find it anywhere. It's super easy to come by. We've got front rotors, we've got calipers, we've got Duralast gold brake pads. We're gonna put those on the front axle, and when it comes time, we've got all new brake hardware from Duralast for the rear. So once again, to make sure our suspension can take a pounding without transferring a beating to the driver, we're turning it into Radflow. For this project, we're using Radflow's 14-inch travel coilover cadmium-plated SSID shocks. The great thing about coilovers, especially high-quality coilovers like these Radflows, is they're tunable, easily adjustable, and we can really dial it in to work well in all sorts of different terrains, on or off-road. First, we want to take a measurement, get the collapse length, so for these 14 inch travel shocks, we're at a collapse length of 22 and a half. When we set this up in here, we're gonna get it all the way up to full bump, build our tabs, and then actually uh, set up our bump stops. Before we go welding any tabs here, we wanna keep these wrap flows looking great. We're gonna wrap them in some of this uh, welding deflection paper here. So we're continuing on the Jeep, but we're also going to start in on this truck, which I want to talk a little about because it's a very special vehicle, especially to me, an early Dodge fanatic. This is one of the first 12-valve Cummins Dodge truck test mules. In 2019, Cummins repowered it with a 24-valve 5.9 for SEMA, which is why it's so quiet. However, when they did that, they used a two-wheel drive, six-speed transmission. So we're gonna take this vehicle, convert it back to a proper four by four, and throw some off-road goodies at it. The original engine was a 5.9 liter engine, uh, inline six. You know, it started out uh, as a, a bit of a skunk works uh, project to explore uh, options. Uh, for getting uh, you know some of our power into into the Ram truck. As we're looking at the development of, of the units, what our customers expect, they expect a, an engine, a powertrain that that will last 
the life of the vehicle, of course. We have customers that are running 100,000 miles a year. And so that's the expectation that's, that's on our engines. And when there's a come and see on the side of the truck, that's the expectation, is, is they, they've got power for life and, and durability for life. My thought process was the Ram would just make a really cool support vehicle for their Heritage Center. Like I said before, the Heritage Center is where they keep all that iconic Cummins memorabilia and history. And I think if we basically make a service truck, almost like a chase truck for them, maybe put some cool old logos on the side, just give it that old style, like an old hot rod uh, shop truck for that shop, I think it'll be perfect for them. So we're not gonna go crazy. We are gonna make it four wheel drive again. We're just gonna make it cool.